Hey guys, this is Cam315 back at it with another video for you guys. And I'm back with another Bakugan episode review for you guys as we are in episode nine. Um, and uh, we continue on with the story. Now we're getting introduced, well, in person to Alice um, because she's actually flying in. The fun and interesting tidbit we find out she actually is uh, flying in from Moscow. If you know what capital of the world that means, uh, well, yeah, you know that it's from a country that right now is woo, not looking too good in terms of global views and stuff like that, I guess, unless you're a few other countries, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, that's the whole thing. And then we kind of get this episode centered around another, you know, villain of the week in terms of masquerade, selecting these two goons to do this and stuff like that. And yeah, but we'll get into it. Um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, this might, episode might be relatively short. But, regardless. Anyways. Um, Dan Maruno. Dan Maruno. Yeah. Dan Marucho and Runo are all going to the airport. All went to the airport to pretty much go pick up Alice from the airport and find her. Because she was flying in to meet them in person for the first time. Now. She decided to do this in person for the first time with the whole news that happened of the last episode with the revelations that were going on there about her about um, her her um, grandfather, Dr. Michael. And pretty much her whole thing this episode is wondering if she should tell the other brawlers, you know, that my my grandfather is pretty much a mastermind behind this entire plot um, and everything. Um, now, Dan is completely out of the episode, like, legitimately, like, the entire the entire episode. He only starts shows up at the beginning and then the end, really, um, because he ends up getting lost in the um, airport now. I'm guessing that means he's like Zoro from One Piece, but okay. Um, also, another interesting tidbit I found to mention is the fact that the uh, guys were actually in the straight-up terminals looking for Alice. Um, unless this airport is bigger than I thought it was and how airports operated differently at the time. Um, because this show did come out in like 2008 and stuff like that. Um, I'm guessing unless that's a Japan thing, how their airports are structured. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that's the whole thing. Anyways, um, we start the episode off with these two kids whose names I forgot. One looks, one has pretty much Vegeta hair and another guy has goggles um and they're with this uh girl by the name of Mew. Don't get it confused with the Pokemon Mew, a girl named Mew. Now, don't know why they named the, her parents named this girl Mew, but okay, fine. Maybe that means when I have kids, I should name my my kid after a Pokemon name. Okay, anyways. Well, we find out Mew is having a brother that's flying in. Um, and we actually kind of get like a kind of a dark storyline just from the standpoint. Um, it's the whole thing of me wanting to see her younger brother because her parents ended up, their parents ended up divorcing. So one parent ended up taking Mew and the other parent ended up taking away her little brother. And it's been like a long time since she's seen her little brother. I forgot what the brother's name. I know it started with a K or something like that. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so that was the whole thing, but Mew desperately wants to see her brother and everything. And she's just waiting at the airport for her brother to fly in and everything. And pretty much, you know, her friends are just chilling. there, just saying, hey, we need to be patient and wait and wait a bit. And he'll be here and he'll be happy to see you and everything. But the see, you see, the thing is Masquerade ends up showing up. Um, and he's like, why be patient and wait when you can just get what you want right now. Uh, if you ask me, this is like probably like one of the few times where Masquerade actually like, we actually kind of see um, what Masquerade kind of does, you know, to mess with these people's minds and not use the whole hypnosis effect. He pretty much makes false promises he can't keep, which he did the same thing with Jenny's and Jewel, Jenny and Jules, and he's doing the same thing with these kids. Um, the interesting thing is Mew in the battle with Marucho and Runo, she picks up on the standpoint that they're not fighting the way that they should be fighting and everything. I mean, stuff like that. But it goes to show Masquerade is kind of a sn sniveling um, coward because 
while he's off trying to do what he's trying to do, he pretty much gets these other people to do his bidding at a cost where he makes them look like terrible individuals um, and pretty much takes away their morals because he makes promises he can't keep. Like his whole promise, his whole thing to um, these dudes is, oh, don't worry. If you freaking do this bidding for me and you take out these people for me, you're the quicker you the quicker you can have your friend's little brother come back um as fast as you know he can um which you ask me is honestly honestly it's like i, I have to admit it was one of the messed up more one of the more fucked up things masquerade has ever fucking done in the series in terms of tempting people um to do things like it's actually kind of messed up when you think about it because this guy actively is like yeah take out and kill these and these bakugan and defeat these people and you can see your little brother easily again and i'm like that's really messed up which marucho um dan and ruin at the end of the episode they all point out um you know how screwed up that is and it goes to again it puts more heat on masquerade for the fact that you're supposed to hate him as a character and everything um and stuff like that so yeah but anyways runo and marucho end up meeting up with alice and everything and again they acknowledge how much of a snack she looks like it was mostly preyus um but runo made the mention i think there's a moment where marucho ends up freaking um i guess you can say how would I say it? I, th- I think there's, there's a moment where I think I, it is Runa that kind of compliments the way Alice looks and she kind of, and he does say like she does look cute in a later episode and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, um, that's the whole thing there. Um, you know, um, but, you know, they're just kind of talking and Alice is just kind of just wondering, like, should I tell them? about my grandfather dr michael and everything and that's why we find out the reasoning why she's you know there today anyways they end up running into those same kids that masquerade manipulated and they pretty much challenge him to a bad they challenge him to a battle so i'm in the doom cars and everything they're like you're working for masquerade and everything and they start the battle <clears throat> so i'm just kind of do a quick overview of the battle the brothers start to get the upper hand um on uh the 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 brothers are to get the upper hand um on the brawlers pretty much and the thing is every time each the bakugan go into the doom dimension you focus over a little bit to mew and mew looks like she's visibly upset like absolutely disturbed at what's happening she doesn't like this um now alice kind of tells runo and marucha hey guys you know you need to start playing it out because before this whole battle start marucha was pretty much telling um Alice telling Preyus that Alice is pretty much the brains of the brawlers. The fact that even though she doesn't battle, she pretty much knows her stuff in terms of the game of Bakugan. Like she's very highly adept. Pretty much the I, I guess you can say I, I made a mention. She is a smart Alec. Um they specify like she's smarter than Marucho in terms of the game of Bakugan. Um, but you know, that's the whole thing there. Um, but like I said, the battle keeps going on and it's raging on and on. Um, and it gets to a point where, you know, after more Bakugan just ha- be, are headed to the Doom dimension and everything, it just gets Mew visibly upset to the point she starts to scream out and lash out and starts to cry because she's pretty much saying, like, my brother always loved what you guys did in terms of playing Bakugan and everything. And now it's not like I, now it's like I don't even know you guys anymore because you guys aren't playing the right way you're like you're legitimately taking these people's bakugan away and you guys are acting visibly different and because of it um they they realize what they're doing what they've done is wrong and they're like oh shoot we just made our friend cry they end up recalling their doom cards and everything and they pretty much apologize for the way they acted and stuff like that and the fact that they thought you know that masquerade would promise them that they would get Mew's brother to return um as quickly as possible but it goes to show that they ultimately masquerade ultimately lied anyways marucho and runa end up talking to them and say hey what are you doing don't you want to continue the battle and everything and pretty much they the rest of the battle is pretty much a f- fair fight we later find out that we don't see the how the rest of the battle takes place because the problem has already been resolved and everything so we but we do find out marucho and runo end up winning 
um anyways and i think both the brothers had like i think one bakugan each regardless so of course they would have won of course marucho and runa would have won but pretty much they all everybody all makes up they're all friends and everything and they pretty much say yeah we really thought masquerade was like legitimately gonna bring Mew's brother back but i guess we can't trust that guy anyways uh speaking of it um dan actually runs into um Mew's brother makes to mention that you know Mew has brothers have Mew has friends um or he has friends that do bakugan battles and he's like you know, Dan's like, oh, really? I should probably take them on one of these times. And yeah, he goes off. Mew ends up getting an alert saying that he finally landed and everything. And he's me and Mew's brother's looking for him. So before she goes off, she pretty much gives a kiss on the cheek to both the dudes. So it goes to show you uh, she definitely. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to keep it three. I'm going to I'm going to keep it PG. Um, but uh it seems like these guys' future, they're going to have to fight over Mew, I guess, unless they want to freaking keep it PG, keep it PG. But anyways, um, they go off their own ways and stuff like that. Dan ends up meeting up with all three of them. They chew his ass out with the standpoint, where, where the hell were you? Everything. But they pretty much, Marucho and Runo pretty much tell, inform Dan of what Masquerade pretty much did um, to them. And pretty much Dan is like, Jesus, we got to stop these guys. We got to stop Naga, Masquerade, and that Dr. Michael too. And it almost came to the part where I was just about to explain, about to tell the other brawlers about um, that Dr. Michael is related to her and everything. But yeah, that's kind of where the episode ends off. So yeah, um, next episode, episode 10, um, is going to be focused on Julie, um, which... She's another member of the Brawler, so Julie makes her anime appearance and everything, um, and she goes up against um, her childhood friend, Billy. Hold on a quick second, guys. Sorry for that. I know I'm getting to the end of the video, but like I said, um, yeah, we get introduced to Julie, uh, her best friend, childhood friend, Billy, um, a new talking Bakugan, as well as we get introduced to Julie's main bakugan partner in gorem but we'll save that for the next episode review but other than that guys if you guys like the video leave a like put in the comment section your thoughts on this episode of bakugan and hit the subscribe button if you want more bakugan content <laughs> sorry i just had to lift something heavy up i'll talk to you guys later see you guys later peace <laughs>